The sneaker game lost an absolute legend. The Amaman Year 95s are sitting on the website, but us here in the UK can't check out. We've had some better looks at the Union ones coming out next year, including some on-foot looks, and these don't look quite so sus. And we've got a whole bunch of other sneaker stories to talk about in this week's sneaker wrap. Hello everybody, it is me, Jordan Young, back with your weekly sneaker news recap banger. Every Saturday I do these episodes where we look back at the biggest sneaker news stories from the past week, talk about some upcoming sneaker releases, and generally just have a gay old time with one another. As always, we're gonna kick things off by recapping this week's biggest sneaker releases. First and foremost, we had the Adidas Wales Bonner Winter Collection. Some regular old Sambas, some Samba Millenniums, as well as some Superstars came out. The OG Sambas sold out, but I think the reason that they did is because a lot of resellers or prospectors are thinking that these might follow the same pattern as previous Wales Bonner Sambas, which are now going for crazy money in the resale market. The Millenniums and the Superstars are still sitting. If you guys wanted to check out my review on the Superstars that I posted yesterday, feel free to click on the video above. We also had the Central C Air Max 95s, as well as the Central C Tech Fleece. This release was incredibly popular with young men aged between 12 and 16 from a white middle-class background. And we also had the Amamanye website release of the Air Max 95 which are still sad as far as I can tell. I tried to cart a pair myself, but when it came to check out the shipping, wouldn't update to my address. So maybe Amamanye aren't willing to ship to the UK at this point, but it doesn't matter because these are actually set to drop in a couple of days here in the UK. Also had the Jordan 4 Orchids, which were pretty quick to sell out this morning. And that is about it. What did you guys pick up this week? Anything? If so, let me know. Let's get into the news, and I want to kick it off with a sad story, the passing of God's favorite DJ, DJ Clark Kent. This was a bit of a shock. The bro has been quietly dealing with colon cancer over the past few years, and tragically passed away yesterday. If you've been tapped into the sneaker culture over the years, you'll know exactly who DJ Clark Kent is. If you're a bit of a hip hop fan or a hip hop head, you'll no doubt recognize him from his legendary production work with the likes of Biggie Smalls or with Jay-Z or his DJ work. But from a sneakerhead or a sneaker culture perspective, he's like your favorite collector's favorite collector. He's done legendary collabs with the likes of Nike in the past, famously on his 112 pack. You guys will probably recognize the pair from the backgrounds here. These are the SBs that he did. He's a real OG in the sneaker culture. And so massive condolences to his family in these tragic times. The bro will definitely be missed. Shifting gears to another story that is kind of crazy. You guys might have seen this this week, man. The Dogs Crocs sold out immediately online. That's right, resellers are getting desperate. They've moved on from hoovering up all of the stuff that you and I want to hoovering up all of the stuff that your dogs certainly don't want. And the kicker, these things were 50 bucks. You guys might have seen this story doing the rounds earlier in the week. Washington DC police have been urging their citizens to avoid wearing expensive sneakers out in public, particularly to high school kids who for some reason are going to school completely decked out in designer clobber from head to toe, almost inviting this type of of calamity upon themselves. One safety measure that had been encouraged for members of this high school was to make sure that you are walking in groups of three or more. But then this group of three or more got robbed for all of their kicks anyway, in what must have felt like a bit of a jackpot to the robber wielding a gun. And you can bet that the replica community are all out there with their hands up saying, told you so, this is why we wear reps. The NBA tipped off this week, which means sneaker brands are back at it with the marketing, back at it with the advertising, back at it with the shade casting and the stone throwing and the shot firing. And one of the most interesting ones of the week was this advertising campaign from Adidas for the AE shoe, Anthony Edwards. Not the AE2, he's basically just sitting down with some kind of lie detector, screwed in ear, and in the advert, he's subtly, well not actually that subtly, throwing shade at the Eastern Conference, the Boston Celtics, all the while bigging himself up. And then when the Timberwolves faced off against the Lakers this week, wherein the Lakers beat them, Nike were quick to fire some shots back. 
using some subliminals from AE's own advertising. And it wasn't just that that we got to see this week either. We also got to see Nike's new campaign where they're obviously enjoying LeBron and his son being on the same team. And so in this commercial, you can see here, LeBron is hazing the new rookie by filling up his car with Fruity Pebbles. And it shows that, yeah, Nike are looking to have a little bit of fun with this situation and milk it for what it's worth. Albeit that is a little bit of a waste of cereal, it has to be said. So yeah, we're back into it this week. Who have you guys got for the title this year? Feel free to let me know down below. We also had some marketing around the Wu-Tang Dunks, which are coming up next month. This follows on from last week where we saw Fat Joe taking receipts of his pair featuring the whole special box with the honey and the t-shirt and stuff like that. But this campaign features some members of the New York Knicks trying to pick up some ice cream, some nice subtle musical references to Wu-Tang in it, which was pretty cool. So obviously the hype is starting to build for the Wu-Tang Dunk release. And we also saw on Complex this week RZA feature in an interview where he was talking about the reasons for bringing the shoe back. The hype's starting to build up a little bit for the shoe, although I can't help but feel like if the numbers are pretty big on this shoe, these could very well end up bricking. What do you guys think about that? Staying with the hoop shoe theme for a moment, we had our first look at the debut of the 361 degree Joker shoe. And looking at the shoe, it's pretty clean, man. It does give me a little bit of Jason Tatum shoe, it does give me a little bit of way of weight or leaning. I don't know, it feels like the current modern basketball sneaker is very much same same, no matter which brand is producing it or what player is rocking it. They look cool nonetheless, they look clean, they look like they'd be good to hoop in. And yeah, fair play to Jokic. I would argue this shoe is long overdue. What do you guys think? Right, let's talk about some exciting upcoming sneakers. We'll recap some of the main stories from the past week, starting off with the Union Ones that are set to drop next year. It's kind of funny, we've been waiting for this shoe for a long time. We've seen some customs which look great. We've seen some speculative mock-ups which look great. And we got the actual shoe and they look good. Well, they look okay. In fact, the first images that we got, these look completely fake, but we've had some updated images as well as some on-foot shots, and they look a lot better in these shots. I can't lie, but are they as good or are they better than the previous models, the Black Toes or the Storm Blues? I don't know, man. I'm still kind of ranking these third out of the pack. What some people are saying is that in order to qualify for this shoe, you should have bought a Jordan 1 High in 2023 or 2022. If you are just coming off the bench to grab these, you are little more than a hype beast, which is kind of a valid take, I can't lie. Now we've only just gotten a look at this shoe and we've already heard that the date for these has been pushed back already, something like next summer. But at least according to these images, they no longer look fake. The shape looks a lot better. These images are a lot crisper and a lot cleaner. They do look nice on foot. So one interesting thing I noticed is that the tongue label is pretty plain Jane. It's just got the whites with the Nike writing on it. So that's kind of an interesting departure from the previous models. Otherwise, it's as we would expect. Are you guys feeling these? Have you changed your mind on these? What are you guys saying on these now? Let me know. Now, we also heard this week that in 2025, we're going to be getting another off-white Jordan 1 High. And for the longest time, we've been thinking that this could be the Canary pair because you know the samples are out there. We've been anticipating the sneaker for a number of years now. But the confirmation rumor is that the style code is a white on white. And that's what we have to go off. And so the speculation is currently that given the color code, this could be a retro of the NRG or the EU pair. The other alternative is that it could be a shoe based on one of the original off-white samples that Virgil did back in the day. So no confirmation on whether or not it's a retro. To me, doing a retro would just be silly when you could do anything and everything color scheme wise. Why would you go for a shoe that we already have? Why would you retro a shoe that we know ages really, really poorly? So no other updates at this point, but make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you're following me over on IG as well so I can keep you guys updated when we get some new info. And then the last big Jordan 1 high story that we caught wind of this week is a fragment 
Union Jordan 1 High collab is rumored or confirmed to be rumored or whatever for next year as well. So we have a Jordan 1 High Union and then we have a Jordan 1 High Union Fragment and then we also have a Jordan 1 Low Fragment Travis Scott. So they're definitely getting a bit trigger happy with the collabs it seems on the Jordan 1s for next year, which to some people's mind is a little bit of overkill considering how many grails we've got slated for next year, considering how many hot retros we've got coming out next year. A lot of people, including myself, are happy about some of them, but let's not forget that the whole oversaturating the retro game is what got Nike into this funk. But these mock-ups look really good though, in my opinion, I think this color blocking with the fragment lower and maybe a neutral gray or some kind of different take on the top looks really good. I've had some updates with regard to some release dates. It's a long way away, so I won't spend too much time taking you guys through these, but basically we have here the rumor that the Union ones, which were originally speculated for February, have been pushed back to the summer, which I just spoke about. We've also got this top three or this rare Air Jordan 4 that was supposed to come out in February as well. That's also been pushed back to the summer. And then I'm hearing that the SB4s, the red colorway, is being pushed back to the summer as well. And that maybe the Navy pair might not even be coming out now. I don't know, man. Like You know how these rumors go. They come, they go, they're launching, they're not launching. That's the latest. But our first look at the Jordan 3 Black Cats, and I spoke about this shoe in the midweek restock. But what I didn't mention is the laces, man. Like the shoe itself, Black Cat 2007, we know it, we remember it, love it, all that type of jazz. The laces, man, is it just me or are these a little bit blue? I couldn't decide initially whether or not they had actually gone for some kind of like a blue tint, but yeah, these pictures definitely have the laces looking a little bit blue and that's, at least according to my memory, is not how the Black Cats originally came. So hearing about the Pure Money 3s as well for next year, which is a cool retro, but the thing about the Pure Monies, if you guys had a pair in 07 or if you had a similar type of pair in 07, is a little bit like the EU or the NRG Jordan 1 High Off-Whites. Once these things start to turn, they really look scummy. In fact, they look like the brand new shoes <laughs> that Jordan brand are reimagining these days. We've had some confirmation this week about the exciting collab between Nike and Supreme next year on the SB Dunk Low. And they didn't want to do this release by halves. They didn't want anyone to go without. And so they've decided, it seems, to come out with five different colorways for the drop. I wonder if this isn't a little bit of overkill to do five on the same day. Anyway, we've got a white pair with a gray swoosh. We've got a darker pair, like a charcoal colorway. We've got a blue colorway, and then we've got this sort of green colorway, and then a colorway yet to be released. And these mock-ups are all based on little partial images that we've been able to get online. We've seen some official images of the Air Jordan 9 Olive, arguably the best Jordan 9 colorway out there. These are set to drop next month. Retail $210. And according to these images, man, these look good. What I'm liking about these is they look a little bit closer to the original shape and they're not quite so boxy and bulky, even though the Jordan 9 itself pretty much looks and wears like a brick. These don't look too oblique. These don't look too quadrilateral. You feel me? They, they look a little bit more lighter and leaner. And I'm going to be gassed when these end up going on sale and are copable for way under retail. We've had a better look at the Nike Kobe 5 Year of the Mamba. Previewed the sneaker last week with those god-awful Motorola Razr pictures. This week we've got a 3.2 megapixel camera, it looks like. But at least we've got some natural light where we can see the shoe a little bit clearer. And yeah, they look fine. They look cool. Year of the Snake, cool. I've had some official images of the Aminair New Balance 740B2. This is the Benson Tech collab. And these are really nice. I like this colorway. It's kind of bright, kind of vibrant, kind of out there. I haven't tried out the 740 V2 model from New Balance, so I would be pretty interested. And the cool thing about this is Aminair has pledged to donate 25K to the radio KBPS program graduates at Benson Tech to help them with their college expenses. Awake New York are 
going to be teaming up with Jordan Brand again next year to bring us a couple of versions of the Air Jordan 5. We don't have any images or even any color codes or mock-ups to go off. Now, on the Air Jordan 5, we spoke last week about DJ Khaled potentially teaming up with Jordan Brands to bring out a couple of colorways of the Jordan 5. We also have the reimagined Jordan 5 Black Metallic to look forward to, as well as the grapes, as well as the black tongues. And so I think what we're seeing here is a massive oversaturation. Don't get me wrong. These OGs, I'm happy with. The thing with Awake New York is they've already worked on sneakers with Jordan brands like the Airship, and every Airship that they've worked on has been nicely executed with nice materials, don't get me wrong, but they've all gone on sale. So this is not the type of news that I think a lot of sneakerheads are really pumped up about. Speaking of collabs, this one, it's not really to my taste, but I'm sure some of you guys out there may like them. This is the latest from Edison Chen and his Adidas partnership. We have a Klotz Gazelle OG couple of colorways here and these kind of look like a little bit of a sashiko a little bit of a denim vibe to them they feature some beaded stripes along the side so it's been a big year for nike and the re-release of one of their best air max models of all times the 180 the ultramarines were a bit of a knockout and the concords although they've gone on sale were pretty well received as well and the next colorway that we have to look forward to is this quote-unquote joker colorway featuring some hits of lime green and purple on a predominantly black base with a white swoosh. We've seen this color combo before on some Jordan 3s you guys might remember and these are set to drop on November the 5th for $150. Me personally I'm not really that into these myself. I'd much rather have the Ultramarines or the Concords for that matter. Action Bronson's Performance New Balance collection is going to be dropping very soon on November the 1st. There are a couple of different sneakers, one of which I'm pretty keen on. You have a New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V4, which is going to be retailing for 170 bucks and is more of a performance running shoe, very lightweight with the mesh upper and the chunky, almost rocker midsole. These look like they'd be pretty good for running in, sort of orange colorway, a little bit of blue, some baklava detailing. These look pretty sweet, to be fair. And then you also have the M10 Minimus trail shoe, which is going to be $150. And these are going to be releasing initially November the 1st, exclusively on specializinglife.com and then a wider launch on New Balance at a later date, TBC. Right, let's finish off today's episode by talking about some of the sneakers that you guys might want to keep an eye out for. No doubt you'll have seen your sneakers apps load up with the Nike Halloween releases that are set to go down this week. You also have the Adidas and Korn collab on the Superstars, as well as the Jound and Asics collab on the GT2160. There's a white colorway and a black colorway. But yeah, it's a pretty light week. I will be coming out in the next few days with the video previewing all of the hottest releases for November. It is set to be a pretty big month for releases. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can stand by writhing with anticipation for the imminent release of that certified hood classic and that is it for this week's sneaker wrap thank you guys as always so much for taking the time to watch the video i really appreciate your guys engagement on the video don't forget to go and drop me a follow on ig and don't forget to like the video before you bounce and once again deepest condolences to the family of the absolute legend that is dj clark kent i'll see you guys on the next video take care for now and peace Beginnings on the cusp, on the cusp. Not too old to adjust. Old dog, new tricks. Remember, I was just a pup, son dirty in my cup. In my cup. Clean soul, good karma is a must. Still my shooter in the cut. I was stuck inside a rut. In a rut. Played the game, made bank, move G. Anything to get a buck. 